Stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king. Bernardo. He. You come most carefully upon your hour. Tis now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. For this relief, much thanks. Tis bitter cold and I am sick at heart. Have you had quiet guard? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I heard them now. Stand to! Who's there? Where's it is ground? The nation to the day. Give you good night. Farewell on the soldier. I will leave you. Bernardo hath my place. Give you good night. Hello, Bernardo. Say, what is Horatio there? <laughs> a piece of him. I welcome Horatio and welcome good Marcellus. What has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy and will not let belief take hold of him touching this dreaded sight twice seen of us. Therefore I have entreated him along to watch the minutes of this night, that if his apparition come again, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Tush, tush, will not appear. Yeah. Sit down a while, and let us once again assail your ears, that are so fortified against our story. What we have two nights seen. Well, sit we down and let us hear Bernard speak of this. Last night of all, when yon same star that's westward from the pole had made his course to William that part of heaven where now it burns. Marcellus and myself, the bell that beats the wall. Oh, look where he comes again! In the same figure like the king that's dead! No, oh, does God, I'll speak to it, Horatio! Looks like not like the king! Mark it, Horatio! It's like it harrows me with fear and wonder. It would be spoke to. Speak to it, Horatio! What art thou that usurpest that time of night? Together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of buried Denmark did sometimes march. For heaven, now chance ye speak! It is offended. You see, it stalks away. Stay and speak! I charge thee speak! It is offended and will not answer. <coughs> How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is not this something more than fantasy? What think you on it? Oh, my God, I might not disbelieve without the sense of drew about from mine own eyes. Look the not like the king. Is that what you yourself? Such was the very armour he had on when he the ambitious Norway combated. And thus twice before in jump at this dread hour with martial stalk hath he gone by our watch. In what particular thought of work I know not. Yet in the gross and scope of mine opinion, this bodes some strange eruption in our state. The motive is to trouble the mind's eye. Stop behold where he comes again. Cross the very blast me. Stay illusion! If thou hast any sound or use of voice, Oh, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done that may do thee ease and grace to me, oh, speak of it. For if thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily for knowing may avoid, oh, speak. For if thou hast supported in thy life, it's still the treasure in the womb of the earth, for which they say your spirits are walking death. Oh, speak. Stay and speak! Stop it, Marcellus! It is gone. We do it wrong being so majestical to offer it such a show of violence, for it is as the air and vulnerable in our vain blows but malicious mockery. It was about to speak when the cock crew. And then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summer. It faded on the crowing of the cock. But look, the morning bus is meant to cloud books all the of your nice to hear. Correct me, I watch up. And by my advice, let us impart what we have seen in our dainty young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit done to us will speak to him. You can send shall acquaint him with this, as me for in our last fitting our duty. Let's do it, I pray. And I this morning know where we will find him most conveniently. <laughs> Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it thus be fitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. 
Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him, together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore our sometimes sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state, have we as twere with a defeated joy, with an auspicious and a dropping eye, with mirth in funeral and with dirge in marriage, taken to wife. Nor have we herein barred your better judgments, which are freely gone with this affair law, for all our thanks. <laughs> and now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is it, Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be my offer? Not thy asking. The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth, than is the throne of Denmark to thy father. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? My dread lord, your leave and favour to return to France, from whence though willingly I came to Denmark, to show my duty in your coronation. <coughs> Yet now I must confess that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave, my laboursome petition, and at last, upon his will, I sealed my heart consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes, time be thine, and thy best graces spend it at thy will. But now, my cousin Hamlet, and my son, a little more than kin and less than kind, how is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighty colour off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lid seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou know tis common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. It is. I know not seems. It is not alone my inky cloak, good mother. Your customary suits of solemn black. Nor windy suspiration of forced breath. No, nor the fruitful river in the eye. Nor the dejected behaviour of the visage, together with all forms, mood shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem. For they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which power is shown. These but the trappings and the suits of woe. <laughs> Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his. But to persever in obstinate condolment is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven. An understanding simple and unschooled, for what we know must be, and is as common as any of the most vulgar thing to sense. Why should we, in our peevish opposition, take it to heart? Fie! Tis a fault to heaven. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire, and we beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray you, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. <clears throat> Why, tis a loving and a fair reply. He has ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. That this too, too sullied flesh would melt, fall, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed this cannon against self slaughter. Oh, God! God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world! Fie on, ah, fie! Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this. A two months dead, nay, not so much, not so. <coughs> oh, excellent a king. It was to this high period to a satyr. So loving to my mother. 
he might not retain the winds of heaven visit her face to rough me. Heaven and earth, must I remember? Why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet, within a month, let me not think on't. Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month, or ere those shoes were old, with which she followed my poor father's body. Like Niobe, all tears. Why she, even she, oh God, a beast at once discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle, my father's brother. But no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flashing in her gallant eyes, she married a most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good, but break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. How to your lordship? I'm glad to see you well. Horatio! For I do forget myself. Let's say, my lord, <laughs> and your poor servant ever. Uh -huh. Change that name with you. And what make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus. My good lord. Ah, I'm very glad to see you. Greetings, sir. But what in faith make you from Wittenberg? A true disposition, yeah. my lord. Well, I would not hear your enemy say so. Nor would you do my ear that violence to make a trust of your own report against yourself. I know you were no truant. But what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep, eh, at a part. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I really do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it followed hard upon thrift, thrift ratio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I ever had met my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I'd seen that day, Horatio? My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. Saw him once. Was a goodly king. Or was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord. I think I saw him yesternight. So? Who? My lord, the king. Your father. <coughs> king, my father? Season your admiration for a while. With an attempt ear till I may deliver. Upon the witness of these gentlemen this morning to you. Oh, for God's sake, let me hear. Two nights together have these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch, in the dead waste and middle of the night, being thus encountered. A figure like your father, armed at point exactly, cap pay, appears before them, and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Twice he will bear oppressed and fear surprised eyes, whilst they, <laughs> distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear, Stand down and speak not for me. This to me in dreadful secrecy, in part they did, and I with them the third night kept a watch. Where both in time, all must have seen each word made true and good. The apparition comes. I knew you, Father, his hands were not more like. Well, but where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Well, did you not speak to him? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. It once me thought he lifted up its head, and did address to motion as if it would speak, but even then the morning cock grew loud, and at the sound of it in shrug and haste away. Very strange. As I do live, my honoured lord, this true. And we did think it read down in our duty to let you know. And indeed, indeed, sir. But this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. Arm, thank you. Arm, my lord. From top to top, my lord, from head to foot. And saw you not his face. Oh, yes, my lord, I did. What looks he frowning? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. What pale or red? Very pale. And fixed his eyes upon you. Most comfortable. <coughs> would I have been there? He would have very much amazed you. Very like. Very like. Stay it long. Well, one with a moderate haste must tell a hundred. Longer, longer. Not, not when I saw. Well, his beard was grizzled, no? As I had seen it in his life, the sable silver. I will watch tonight, the chance will walk again. I warrant you will. If it assume my noble father's person, I will speak to it. Though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. And whatever else shall happen tonight, it is an understanding, but no tongue. I will requite your loves, so fare you well. Upon the platform twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our duty to your honour. Your loves is mine to you. Farewell. <clears throat> Father, spirit in arms. All is not well. 
I doubt some foul play. Oh, when the night will come, till then sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet and the trifling of his favour, hold it a fashion and a toy and blood no more. No more but so. Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear his greatness weighed, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state. And weigh what loss your honour may sustain if with too credent ear you list his songs, or lose your heart, or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity. Fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister. Keep you on the rear of your affections, out of the shot and danger of desire. Be wary then, best, best safety lies in fear. Youth to itself rebels, though none else near. Shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart? A good my brother, <laughs> do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst I could puff in reckless liberty himself. The primrose path of Daniel's treads, and wrecks not his own reed. Fear me not, I stay too long. Here my father comes. Yet here, Laertes. Aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There. My blessing with thee, and these few precepts in thy memory of dark character. Give thy thoughts no time, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them unto thy soul with hoops of steel. Give every man thine ear, but with you thy voice. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. Neither a borrower nor an enemy, for loan not loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulleth the edge of husbandry. This, above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow, as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to anyone. Farewell. My blessing sees the this in me. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. The time invites you. Go. Your servants ten. Farewell, Ophelia. Remember well what I have told you. It is in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. <coughs> what is to Ophelia? He hath said. Please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Ah, Mary, well we thought. Tis told to me he hath very often late given private time to you. And you yourself have of your audience been most bounteous and free. If it be so, as so it is put on me, and that in way of caution, I have to tell you. You do not understand yourself so clearly as it behoves my daughter and your honour. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord of late, made many tenders of his affection to me. Uh, affection? <laughs> you speak like a green girl, unsickled in such perilous circumstances. Believe his 
ten years, as you call them. I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Marry you. I will teach you. Tender yourself more dearly, or you will tender me a fool. My lord, he hath imported me with love in honourable fashion. Aye, fashion you may call it, Gucci. Gucci. And have given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy mouths of heaven. Aye, springes to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns, how prodigal the soul lends the tongue and bows. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it. I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey my lord. You're by truth. It's very cold. She's in there picking eager. What time now? I think it lasts at twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed? I heard you not. If there are no doors near the season wherein the spirits had this one to walk. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wait tonight and takes his rouse. Is it a custom? I marry is. But to my mind, though I am native here unto the manor born, is a custom more honoured in the breach than the observance. They cleave us drunkards, and with swinish phrase, soil our addition. And indeed it takes from our achievements, though performed at height, the pith and marrow of our attribute. Come! Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of help or goblin damned. Bring with thee airs from heaven or blasts from hell. Be thy intents. Wicked or charitable, I'll speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Dane, or answer me. What may this mean that thou dead course? Again in complete steel revisits us the glimpses of the moon. King Knight hideous, and we fools of nature so hardly to shape our disposition with thoughts beyond the reaches of our souls. Do not follow it, no, by no means. If I will not speak, then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. And what should be the fear? I do not set my life out of any speed. And for my soul, what can it do that? Being a thing immortal as itself. What if it tempts you towards the blood, my lord? Or towards the dreadful summit of a cliff that beetles all its best into the sea? And there assumes our mother horrible form that might deprive you summon to your reason and draw you into madness. I'll follow thee, child, and I'll go with it. And I may! Be bold to tell of God! My faith cries out! Still I have God! My landy gentlemen! By hands I make a ghost of him that lets me! I stay away! He wraps his desperate imagination. Nay, let's follow him. He's not fit us to obey. Have half the wood to what will this come? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Nay, let's follow him. Spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the days confined to fast in the fires. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul. List, list, O oh list, if thou didst ever thy dear father love. Oh God! Revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul, as in the best it is. But this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Oh, haste me to know it, that I may with wings as swift as meditation, and the thoughts of love sweet to my revenge. It is given out, but sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me. But know thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul! My uncle! I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with dangerous wits, won to his shameful lust the will of my most seeming virtue's queen. But soft, methinks I sent the morning air. Brief let me be. 
sleeping within my orchard, my custom always in the afternoon, upon my secure hour thy uncle stole, with juice of cursed heaven in a vial, and in the porches of mine ears did pour the leprous distillment. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible. Oh, horrible. Most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursues this act, Take not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy motherhood. Leave her to heaven, and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the mountain to be near, and gives to pale his ineffectual fire. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Remember me. Remember thee. My poor ghost. Must memory holds a seat in this destructive globe. Remember thee. Yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records. And thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain. Unmixed with baser matter. Oh, yes, by heavens. Oh, most pernicious woman. Oh, villain, fair, smiley, damn thy villain. If I take it, meet it is I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I am sure to sow in Denmark. So, oh, Uncle, there you are. Now to my word. It is adieu. Adieu. Remember me. I have sworn it. So be it. Oh, 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 you will reveal it. But I'm not by heaven. I'll say you then. Would heart a man not think it? But you'll be sick of it. Fire my lord. There's never a villain dwelling in all Denmark. But he's an arrant knave. <coughs> there needs no ghost, my lord, coming from the grave to tell us this. Why, right. You are in the right. And so, not more circumstance at all. I hold it fit we shake hands and part. He's up with wild and wedding words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you heartily. Yes, faith, heartily. There's no offence, my lord. Yes. But there is Horatio and much offence too. It is an honest ghost, that let me tell you. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is, my lord, we will? Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, we will not. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. No, my lord. Upon I... my sword! My lord, we have sworn already. But stay upon my sword indeed! Swear! Oh, sayest thou so, boy? Art thou there, true penny? Come on, consent to swear. Compose the oath, my lord. Never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword! Swear! And lay your hand again upon my sword. Swear by my sword. Never to speak of this that you have heard. Swear by his sword! Oh, well said, old oh, moe! Oh, dang it, no, this is wondrous strange! Therefore, as a stranger give me welcome, there are more things in heaven and earth ratio than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, here, as before, so help you mercy, how strange or odd somewhere I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think me to put an antic disposition on. Was such ambiguous giving out to note that you know aught of me, this do swear. So grace and mercy in your most need help you. Swear! Oh, rest, rest, perturbed spirit. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right.
How now, Ophelia? What's the matter? Oh, my lord, my lord, I have been so affrighted. What in the name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all unbraced, pale as his shirt, and with a look so piteous and purport, as if he had been loosed out of hell, to speak of her as he comes before me. Match for thy love. My lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. Well, what said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow. He forced such perusal on my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head thus waving up and down, he raised a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. And he lets me go, and with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes. For out of doors he went without their helps, and as the last bed of their light on me. What? Have you given him any hard words of late? No, my good lord, but as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his access to me. That hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better heed and judgments I had not quoted him. I feared he did but trifle and meant to rack me. Come, go we to the king. This must be known. Come. that we much did long to see you, the need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation, so call it, since neither the exterior nor the inward man resembles that it was. What it should be more than his father's death that thus hath put him so far from the understanding of himself, I cannot dream of. I entreat you both that, being of so young days brought up with him, and sift so neighborhood to his youth and havior, but you vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time. So by your companies to draw him on to pleasures, and to gather so much as from occasion you may glean, whether aught to us unknown afflicts him thus that opened, lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, he hath much talked of you, and I'm sure two men there are not living to whom he more adheres. <laughs> If it will please you to show you so much gentry and goodwill as to expend your time with us a while, for the supply and profit of our hope, then your visitation <laughs> shall receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. Both your majesty's might, by the sovereign power you have of us, put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreat. <laughs> but we both obey, and here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. Thanks, Rosencrantz and gentle Guildenstern. Thanks, Guildenstern and gentle Rosencrantz. And I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changes. Heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to him. Eh? Hey, oh, no. Polonius! Thou still hast been the father of good news. Have I, my lord? Assure you, my good liege, I do hold my duty as I hold my soul, both to my God and to my gracious king. And I do think, else this brain of mine hunts not the trade of policy so sure as it used to, that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That do I long to hear. He tells me, my dear Gertrude, that he hath found the head and source of all your son's distemper. I doubt it is no other but the mayor, his father's death, and our, our hasty marriage. Well, we shall sift him. I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad call I it for, to define true madness what is but to be nothing else but mad. <laughs> but let that go. More matter with less art. <clears throat> I swear I use no art at all. That he's mad, it is true. Prepare. I have a daughter. 
have once she is mine, who in her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this? Now, gather and surmise. Send this from Hamlet to her. Good madam, stay a while, I will be faithful. <clears throat> Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Thine evermore, most dear lady, was this machine is to him Hamlet. This in obedience hath my daughter shown me, but how hath she received his love? What do you think of me? For I have a man faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. My young mistress, thus did I bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince, out of thy star. <coughs> this must not be. And then I prescripts gave her, that she should lock herself away from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens. Which done, she took the fruits of my advice, and he repelled a, a short tale to make, fell into a sadness then into a fast, thence to a watch, thence to a weakness, thence to a lightness, and by this declension into the madness wherein now he raves, and all we mourn for. Do you think tis this? It may be very like. Hath there been such a time, I would fain know that, that I have positively said tis so, when it proved otherwise? Not that I know. <laughs> Take this from this, if this be otherwise. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in this lobby. So indeed he does. At such a time, I mm -hmm. loose my daughter to him. You and I behind the arras then. Mark the encounter. If he love her not, and be not from his reason fallen, let me be no assistant for estate. We will try it. But look. Where well, sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away! I do beseech you both away. I'll abort him presently. I'll give me leave. <coughs> How does my good Lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. <coughs> do you know me, my lord? Excellent well. You are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord. Aye, sir. For to be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. That's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog, being a good kissing carrier, have you a daughter? I have, my lord. There's an walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing. But as your daughter may conceive, friend, Look to it. How safe am I that? Still harping on my daughter. What do you mean, my lord? What? 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 What is the matter? Between who? I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Slander, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have grey beards, that their faces are wrinkled. Their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands. Uh, all which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, yet I hold it not honestly to have it thus set down. Uh, for you, sir, I shall grow as old as I am, if, like a crab, you could go backward. Though this be madness, yet there is method in it. <laughs> my honourable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will not more willingly part with all. Except my life. Except my life. Except my life. Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. You go to seek the Lord Hamlet. There he is. God save you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> my honoured lord! My most dear lord! My excellent good friends! How dost thou guild them, sir? Ah, <laughs> Rosencrantz! Good lads, how do you both? Oh, as the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over-happy. 
On fortune's cup, we are not the very button. <laughs> Nor on the soles of her shoes. Neither, my lord. Ah, then you live about a waist. Oh, ha, ha. Or in the middle of the favours, eh? It's the her private ah, oh, In the secret <laughs> part of fortune, most true, she is a strong. Oh. What news? Oh, none, my lord. But that the world has grown honest. Oh. And it's doomsday near. But your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What of you, my good friend, is not at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord? Then marks a prison. Oh, then is the world one. A goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards, and dungeons. Then mark being one of the worst. Well, we think not so, my lord. Oh, why then, tis none to you. There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. But to me, it is a prison. Why then, your ambition makes it one. It is too narrow for your mind. Oh, God! I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space were it not that I have bad dreams. Which dreams are indeed ambition? For the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. Well, then a dream itself is but a shadow. Truly, and I hold ambition of so airy and light a quality that it is but a shadow's shadow. Ah, <laughs> then are our beggars bodies. And our monarchs and outstretched heroes, the beggar shadows. Show me to the court, for by my fay I cannot reason. We'll, we'll wait upon you! Oh, no such matter! I would not sort you with the rest of my servants. Or to speak to you like an honest man. I am most dreadfully attended. But in a beaten way of friendship would make you at Elsinore. To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Beggar that I am, I am even poor, thanks. But I thank you. <laughs> sure, my dear friends, my thanks are due to half a penny. But were you not sent for? <laughs> Is it of your own economy? Ah. Is it a free visitation? <laughs> well, come, come. Well, then just leave with me. Come, may speak. What should we say, my lord? Well, anything but to the purpose. I know you were sent for, but there is a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties have not craft enough to colour. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? Well, that you must teach me. Be even and direct with me whether you were sent for or no. What say you? Uh, nay, then I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. And I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery. Oh, and your secrecy to the king and queen was not there. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises. And indeed, it goes so heavily with my disposition that this good be framed the earth. Seems to me a sterile promontory. With this most excellent canopy, the air looking, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire. Why, it appeareth nothing to me but a foul and pestilent congregation of vapours. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculties, in form and moving. How express and admirable in action. How like an angel in apprehension. How oh, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this contestant? Man delights not me. Nor woman either. Though by your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? Well, to think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We coated them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. <laughs> he that plays the king shall be welcome. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Elsinore. Your hands, come then. The appurtenance of welcome is fashion and ceremony. Let me comply with you, Miss Darn. Best life since the place, which I tell you was so fairly outfit, should more appear like entertainment than your horse. You are welcome to Elsinore. But my uncle, father, and aunt, mother are to see. And what, my good lord? I am but mad north north west. In the windy southern, I know a hawk from a handsome. 
Well be with you, gentlemen. I do give them some of you two at each ear a hearer. That great baby you see there is not yet out of his swaddling clouds. <laughs> Happily, he is the second time come to them, for they say an old man is twice a child. <laughs> My good lord, will you see the players well bestowed? Do you hear? Let them be well used, for they are the abstract and brief chronicles of the time. After your death, you had better have a bad epitaph than their ill report whilst you live. My lord, I will use them according to their desert. What's oh, Bodkin, man? Much better! Choose every man after his desert, and who shall stop whipping? <laughs> Use them after your own honour and dignity. But the less they deserve, the more merit is in your bounty. Take them in. Come, sirs. Follow him, friends. We'll hear a play tomorrow. Yes, I'll hear me, old friend. Can you play the mind of some saga? I'm a man. Very well, we'll have it tomorrow night. You could for an eve study a speech of some dozen lines or sixty lines which I will set down and accept into the Aye, my lord. Very well. Look at that, lord, and look you mock him not. My friends, you are welcome to us. Good, my lord. I so, God by you. Bow, <coughs> my friends. Hmm. I have heard <coughs> that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been so struck to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For though <laughs> murder have no tongue, it shall speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these prayers pray something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tempt him to the quick if I do flinch. Then I know my course. The spirit I have seen may be a devil, and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps out of my weakness and melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. No drift of conference get from him why he puts on this confusion, grating so harshly all his days of quiet with turbulence and dangerous lunacy. Well, he does confess he feels himself uh, distracted, but from what cause I will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sounded, but with a crafty madness keeps aloof when we were bringing on to some confession of this true state. Did he receive you well? Oh, most like a gentleman, but with much forcing of his disposition. A negative question, but of our demands most free in his reply. Did he say you to any pastime? Madam. It so fell out that certain players we overwrought on the way. Of these we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear it. Well, I hear about the court, and as I think, they have already order this night to play before him. It is most true, and he beseeched me to entreat your majesty to hear and see the matter with all my heart, and it doth much content me to hear him so inclined. Good gentlemen, give him further edge and drive his purpose into these delights. We shall, my lord. Sweet Gertrude, leave us to We have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear a front for feeling. Her father and myself, lawful as files, will so bestow ourselves that, seeing unseen, we may have their encounter frankly judged, and gather from him, as he has behaved, whether it be the affliction of his love or no, that thus he suffers for him. I shall obey you. For your part, Ophelia, I do hope that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope that your virtues bring him to his wonted way again, to both your honours. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here. Gracious, so please you, we will bestow ourselves. Read on this, that show of such an exercise may colour your loneliness. <laughs> we are off to blame. It is too much proof that with devotion's visage and pious action we do sugar o'er the devil himself. Oh, tis too true. Our smartest lash that speech doth give my conscience. The harlot's cheek beauty with plastering art is not more ugly to the thing that helps it than is my deed to my most painted world. A heavy burden, 
I think I hear him coming, my lord. Let's withdraw. Sleep to say we end the heartache and thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It's a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep, perchance, to dream, I there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear? the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the laws the neck, the insolence of office, and the spurns, the patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietest mate with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but the dread of something after death? the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveller returns, <coughs> puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with a pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment with this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the Ferrovilia, Nymph, in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. Good my lord, what does your honour for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. May not I, I ever gave you what? My honoured lord, you know right well you did. And with them words of so sweet breath composed has made the things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. Then, my lord! Ha! Are you? Honest! My lord! Are you fair? Oh, please, you're not! Then if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty! Your beauty, my lord, I better call myself with honesty! I loved you once! Ah! Oh, my lord, you made me believe so! You should not have believed me! I loved you not! I was the more deceived! Get me to a nunnery! Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I myself am indifferent, honest, but I can accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offences at my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. Well, what should such fellows as I do calling between earth and heaven, where our names all believe none of us? Go thy ways to a nunnery! Where's your father? <laughs> And home, my lord. And let the doors be locked on him. That he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, you sweet heavens. He found me sorry. I give thee his plague, thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape Calvary. Get thee to a nunnery. Go, farewell. Oh, but if thou wouldst leave marry, marry a fool. For wise men know what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery, go. You cheek and amble and you lisp. You nickname God's creatures and make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to. I have no more want. And does 
made me mad! You see, we have no more merit! Those that are married already, all but one shall live! The rest of keepers they are! To a nunnery! Yo! Love! His affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul o'er which his melancholy sits unbruised, and I do doubt the hatch and the disclose will be some danger. Which for to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall but speak to England for the demand of our neglected tribute. Happily the seas and countries different with object variable, shall expel this something settled matter in his heart, whereon his brain still beating puts him thus from fashion of himself. What think you of it? Shall do well. But yet do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. To England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. Come to me the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, when thou seest that act of foot, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe my uncle. If his account of guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as Vulcan's stilly. Give him heedful note, for I mine eyes will rivet to his face, and after, both our judgments will be joined in centre of his seeming. Well, my lord, if you still ought to whilst the play is playing and escape detecting, I will pay the theft. They are coming to the play. I must be able to get you a place. Oh, where's our cousin Ham? The excellent debate of the comedian's dish. I, the heir, promise Ham, you cannot be Caven, so. I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. His words are not mine. No, not mine, now. My lord, you once paid the university, you say? That did I, my lord, and was accounted a good actor. What did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. I was killed in the capital. 
Brutus killed me! It was a brute part of the hymn to kill so capital on a card then. <laughs> Be the players ready? Aye, my lord. They stay upon your patience. Come here, my dear hound, and sit by me. No, good mother. Uh, here's Michael more attractive. You mark that. Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I met my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. What? Did you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. No. There's a fair thought. To lie between maids' legs. What is my lord? Nothing. You will marry my lord. Why? Oh, I, my lord. Oh, God, your only jig maker. What should a man do but be married for? Look you how cheerfully my mother looks. And my father died within two hours. It is twice two months, my lord. For so long? Nay, then let the devil wear black, for I'll have a suit of sables. Oh, heavens. Died two months ago and not forgotten yet. Then there's still hope that a great man's memory might outlive his life half a year. Clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Is this a prologue of the cozy of a ring? It is brief, my lord. As woman's love. Full thirty times hath Phoebus' cart gone round, Neptune's salt washed and Talus orbed ground. Since love our hearts and Hymen did our hands unite commutual with most sacred bands. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us count our again, ere love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late, so far from cheer and from your former state that I distrust you. Yet, though I distrust, discomfort you, my lord, it nothing must. For women fear too much, even as they love, and woman's fear and love hold quantity. In neither ought or in extremity. Now what my love is, proof hath made you know. And as my love is sized, my fear is so. Where love is great, the littlest doubts are fear. Where little fears grow great, great love grows there. Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My operant powers their functions leave to do. And thou shalt in this fair world live behind, 
honoured, beloved, and haply one as kind, for husband shalt thou. Oh, confound the rest. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first. That's wormwood. The instances that second marriage move are base respects of thrift, but none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead, when second husband kisses me in bed. I do believe you think what now you speak, <coughs> but what we do determine, oft we break. This world is not for I, nay, nor tis not strange, that even our loves should with our fortunes change. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife, if once a widow, ever I be wife. If she should break it now. Tis deeply sweet. Sweet, leave me here a while. <laughs> My spirit grows dull, and I fain would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep, rock thy brain, and never come this chance between us twain. Madam, how like you this play? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offence in it? No, no, they do but jest. A poison in jest, no offence in the world. What do you call the play? The Mousetrap. It is a knavish piece of work. But what of that? Your majesty and we that have free souls, it touches us not. This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. Well, as good as a chorus, my lord. Oh, I could interpret between you and your love if I could see the puppet stallying. You are keen, my lord, you are keen. It would cost you a groaning to keep off my legs. Still better and worse. As you must take your husbands. Begin, murderer. Pox, leave thy damnable faces and begin! Come, the croaking raven doth bellow for revenge. Thoughts black, hands apt, drugs fit, and time a clean. Confederate season, else no creature seen. Thou mixture rank of midnight weeds collected. With Hecate's band thrice blasted, thrice infected, thy natural magic and direst property, unwholesome life, usurps immediately. Kills amid the garden for his estate. His name's Gonzago. The story is extant and written very choice Italian. You shall see none how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. What fright of his false fire? Affairs, my lord. Give all the play. Give me some light. Away! Lights! 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 Why did the second day go with the hot and gory play? For some must watch while some must sleep. That's right as the world away. Good ratio. I'll take the ghost word for a thousand pounds, kiss thou perceive? My lord, I did. I told the poor for the poison. I did very well. Aha! Uh -huh. Come, some music. Come the recorders. For if the king liked not the comedy, why then but like he likes it not purdy? Come, some music. Good my lord. But take me a word with you. Sir, a whole history. The king, sir. I sir, what of him? Is in his retirement marvellous distemper. With drink, sir? No, my lord, with colour. For your wisdom should make itself more richer to signify this to the doctor. Good my lord, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. I am saying, sir, pronouns. The queen that your mother in most great affliction of spirit hath sent me to you. Your behaviour hath struck her into amazement and admiration. Oh, a wonderful son who can so astonish a mother. She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. We should come to her by and by. Was she ten times our mother? Or have you any further trade with us? My lord, you once did love me. And do still. By these pickers and steeds. Good, my lord, what is the cause of your distemper? You do surely bar the door upon your own liberty if you deny your griefs to your friend. Will you play upon this pipe? <laughs> My lord, I cannot. I pray you. Believe me, I cannot. No, I do beseech you. 
I know no capture it, my lord. It is as easy as life. I have not the skill. Why, look you now. How unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops. You would pluck the heart of my mystery. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my compass. And there is much music, most excellent voice in this little organ. Yet cannot you make it speak? Shrug! Do you think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will. Though you can fret me, you cannot play upon me. Oh, God bless you, sir! My lord, the queen would speak with you, and presently. Sir. time of night, when churchyards yawn, and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Now could I drink hot blood, and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look upon. So, now to my mother. O oh, heart, lose not thy nature. Let not the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. I must be cruel, not unnatural. I must be daggers to her, but use none. My tongue and soul in this be hypocrites. How in my words so ever she be sent to give them seals? Never my soul consent. England shall along with you. The terms of our estate may not endure. Hazard so near us has not hourly grow out of his brow. We will ourselves <laughs> provide. Most holy and religious fear it is to keep those many bodies safe that live and feed upon your majesty. The single and peculiar life is bound with all the strength and armour of the mind to keep itself from noise. But much more that spirit upon whose wheel depends and rests the lives of many. Arm you, I pray you, to this speedy voyage, for we will fetters put about this fear which now goes too free-footed. We will haste us. My lord, he's going to his mother's closet. Behind the arras, I'll convey myself to hear the process. Ha, I warrant she'll tax him home. And as you said, and wisely was it said, tis meet that some more audience than a mother, since nature makes them partial, should all hear the speech of vantage. Fare you well, my liege. I'll call upon you ere you go to bed and tell you what I know. Thanks, dear my lord. Powerful. My offence is rank. It smells to heaven. That the primal eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. Pray can I not. Though inclination be as sharp as will. Thy stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. And like a man to double business bound, I stand in pause where I shall first <laughs> begin and both neglect. What if this hand were thicker than itself with brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Where to serves mercy but to confront the visage of offence? And what's in prayer but this twofold force? To be forestalled ere we come to fall or pardon being down? <coughs> then I'll look up. 
My fault is past! But the term of prayer can serve my turn. Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, mine own ambition, and my queen. May one be pardoned and retain the offence. In the corrupted currents of this world, offences guilt at hand may shove by justice. And not to seem the wicked prize itself buys out the law. <coughs> but tis not so above. There is no shuffling. There the action lies in his true nature. And we ourselves compelled even to the teeth and forehead of our faults to give in evidence. What then? What rests? Try what repentance can. What can it not? What can it when one cannot repent? <coughs> oh, wretched state. Oh, bosom black as death. Oh, lime with soul that's struggling to be free art more contained. Help, angels! Make a say! Bow, stubborn knees, <coughs> and heart with strings of steel be soft as sinews of the newborn babe. All may be well. Now might I do it, Pat. Now is a praying. And now I'll do it. And so it goes to heaven, and so am I revenged. That would be scary. A villain kills my father, and for that I, his sole son, to send this same villain to heaven when he is fit and seasoned for his passage. No! Up, sword, and know thou art more horrid, hent. When he is drunk asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, again, a swearing, or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it. Then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as black and damned as well where to it goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. My words fly up, my thoughts remain below. Words without <laughs> thoughts never to heaven go. We will come straight. Look you. Lay home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with, and that your grace hath screened and stood between much heat and him. I'll silence me even here. Pray you, be round with him. Mother! 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 I warrant you, fear me not. Withdraw, I hear him coming. <coughs> <coughs> now, Mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Go, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? Now, what's the matter? Have you forgot me? No, by the root, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife, and would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then, I'll set those to you that can speak. Oh, come, come and sit you down. You go not, till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me? Help! Oh! What ho? Oh! Oh, no! Dead for it, that pig! Dead! Oh, ah! me! What hast thou done? <laughs> I know not! Is it the king? Oh, the rush of bloody deed oh. is this! <laughs> bloody deed! Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry his brother! Kill a king. My lady, it was my word. Thou wretched, rash, intruding fool, farewell. Oh. I took thee for thy better. <coughs> Take thy fortune. Thou findest to be too busy is some danger. Leave the of your hands, sir, and let me know your tongue. So 
Christmas. So I shall, if it be made of penetrable stuff. What have I done that thou darest my thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, makes marriage vows as false as vice as owes. Oh, such a deed has from the body of contraction plucks the very soul. And sweet religion makes a rhapsody of words. Heaven's face does glow, yea, this solidity and compound mass is thought sick of the act. I me, mean, what act that roars so loud and thunders in the index? Look you now upon this and on this. The counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what grace was seated on this brow. A combination and form indeed with every god that seemed to set his seal. To give the world assurance of a man, this was your husband. <coughs> Look you now what follows. This is your husband. Like a mildewed ear blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and batten on this moor? Ha! Have you eyes? You cannot call it love. For in your age, the <laughs> day in the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to me? Oh, Hamlet, speak no more to me. Thou turns mine eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and grey that spots as will not leave their teeth. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an insemic bed, stewed in corruption, honeying, and making love over the nasty stars. Oh, speak to me no more, these words like daggers that in mine ears, no more, sweet hunger. A murderer and a villain. No more. A king of shreds and patches. Save me and hover on me with your wings, you heavenly gods. How would your gracious speak up? Yes. <coughs> He's mad. Do you come your tiny son to chime? The lapse in time and passion lets go by the important acting of your dread command. Oh, say! Do not forget. This visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. But look, amazement on thy mother sits. Oh, step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, Hamlet. How is it with you, lady? Yes, how is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air do a whole discourse? Where do you look? On him! On him! Look you up in, Glenn! To whom do you speak? Why do you see nothing there? No, nothing at all yet. All that is, I see. Well, did you nothing here? No, nothing but ourselves. Look you now. See how it steals away! My father in his habit as he lived! Look you even now how it goes out of the portal! This is the very coinage of your brain! Mother! For love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul! Let your dress but, but my madness speaks! Confess yourself to heaven! Repent what's past. Avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. And that thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Oh, lift them. Throw away the heart of heart, and live the purer with the other heart. Good night. But go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. Refrain tonight. And that will lend a kind of easiness to the abstinence that makes more easy. For use almost can change the stamp of nature, and either master the devil or throw him out with wondrous potency. So again, good night. And when you are desirous to be blessed, our blessing beg of you. For this same Lord, I do repent. But heaven hath pleased it so, to punish me with this and this with me. I'll bestow the body and will answer well the death I gave him. 
So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. This bad begins of worse remains behind. One word more, good lady. Should I do? Not this by no means that I bid you. Let the blood king tempt you again to his bed. Pinch wanton on your cheek. Call you his mouth. And let him for a pair of richy kisses. And paddling in your neck with his damned fingers. Make you to ravel all this matter out that I essentially am not madness, but mad in craft. Be thou assured, if words are made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I must to England. You know that. I have forgot, tis so concluded on. His letter sealed. And my two schoolfellows, who I would trust as I will add as fang, they bear the mandate. They are to sweep my way and marshal me to knavery. Let it work. For it is the sport to have the engine a hoist with his own petard and shout your heart. This man shall set me packing. I'll lock the guts into the neighborhood. Mother, good night. <coughs> if this, this counselor is now most still, most secret, and most grave, who was it like a foolish prating knave? Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother. matter in these sighs. These profound heaves you must translate. Tis fit we understand them. Where is your son? Oh, oh my own lord, what I've seen tonight. What, Gertrude? How does Hamlet? As mad as the sea and wind when both contend which be the mightier. In his lawless fit, behind the Aris hearing something stir, whips out his sword and kills the unseen good old man. Oh, heavy deed. But had been so with us had we been there. His liberty is full of threats to all, to you yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? Where is he gone? To draw apart the body he hath killed. Oh, Gertrude, come away. The sun no sooner shall a mountain touch, but we will ship him hence. And this vile deed be much with all our majesty and skill, both countenance and excuse. Oh, Gildenstone! Friends both, go join you with some further aid. Hamlet, in madness, hath Polonius slain, and from his mother's closet hath he dragged him. Go seek him out, speak fair, and bring the body into the chapel. I pray you haste in this! Come, Gertrude, we'll call up our wisest friends and let them know both what we mean to do and what's untimely done. So happily slander, whose whisper o'er the world's diameter, as level as the cannon to his blank transports his poison shot, shall miss our name and hit the woundless air. Oh, come away! My heart is full of discord and dismay. Dead body, compounded with dust, 
Where to tis king? Tell us where it is, that we may take it thence and bear it to the chapel. Do not believe it. Believe what? That I cannot keep your counsel and not mine own. Besides, to be demanded of a sponge, what replication should be made by the son of a king? Take you me for a sponge, my lord? sir, that sums up the king's countenance, his rewards, his authorities. But such officers do the king best service in the end. He keeps them like an ape and apple in the corner of his jaw. First mouth, last to be swallowed. When he needs what you have gleaned, it is but squeezing you and sponge. You shall be dry again. I understand you not, my lord. I am glad of it. A foolish speech sleeps in a knavish ear. My lord, you must tell us where the body is and go with us to the king. The body is with the king. <coughs> but the king is not with the body. <coughs> The king is a thing. A thing, my lord? Of nothing. Well, bring me to him. High fox and all after. <laughs> I've sent to seek you and to find the body. How dangerous is it that this man goes loose? It must not be put the strong law on him. He's loved of the distracted multitude. And like not in their understanding, but their eyes. And where to sow the offender scourges way, but never the offence. To bear all smooth and even, this sudden sending him away must seem deliberate pause. Diseases desperate grown by desperate appliance are relieved, or not at all. <laughs> How now? What hath befallen? Where the dead body is bestowed, my lord, you cannot get from him. Now, Hamlet, where's Thelonius? At supper. At supper? Where? Well, not where he eats, but where is it eaten? A certain convocation of politic worms are eaten at him. A man, and may fish with the worm that hath eaten of the king, and eat of the fish that are fed of that worm. What dost thou mean by this? Well, nothing but to show you how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven. I sent him to see. If your messenger find him not, with. Oh, Sit him at the other place yourself. But indeed, if you find him not within this month, you shall know him. As you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go seek him there. Hamlet. I will stay till you come. This deed for thine special safety must send thee hence. Therefore prepare thyself. The bark is ready and the wind at help. The associates tend and everything is begged for England. For England? I have it. Good. So is it, if thou knewest our purpose. I see a cherub that sees them. But come, for England, farewell, good mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. A father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so, my mother. Come, for England. Follow him at foot. Tempted with speed aboard. Delay it not. I'll have him hence tonight. The way. For everything is sealed and done that else leans on the affair. I pray you make haste. And England, if my love thou holds at aught, as my great power thereof may give thee sense, since yet thy secretrice looks raw and red after the Danish sword, and thy free oar pays homage to us. Thou mayst not coldly set our sovereign process which imports at full, by letters congruing to that effect, the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England, for like the hectic in my blood he rages, and thou must heal me. Till I know tis done, howe'er my haps, my joys were ne'er begun. <coughs> Will it please you go, my lord? <coughs> I'll follow straight. Go by, one. <coughs> On all occasions, you inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man? If his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed, a beast no more. Sure, he that made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, 
gave us not the capability to, and godlike reason to fast in us unused. Now, whether it be bestial of living, or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, a thought which caused it hath but one part wisdom, and have a three parts coward. I do not know why yet I live to say this thing's to do. Says I have cause, and will, and strength, and means to do it. Right me. To be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw when honor's at the stake. Ah, oh, from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. in the world and hems and beats her heart, spurns enviously at straws, speaks things in the other carry but half sent her speech is nothing. Yet the unshaped use of it doth move the hearers to collection. They aim at it, <coughs> botch the words up to fit their own thoughts, which as the wings and nods and gestures yield them indeed will make one think they might be thought, but nothing shall yet much unhappily. Too good she was spoken with. She may strew dangerous conjectures in your greedy minds. Nay, then let her come. Where is the beauty's majesty of Denmark? Why, how oh, now, Ophelia? Oh, should I your true love <coughs> from another one? By his cockle hat and staff, and his sandal shoe. Alas, sweet maid, what imports this tune? See you. Nay, pray you, Mark! He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. At his head a grass green turf, at his heels a stone. Nay, but a fool. Pray you, Mark! And his shroud is a mountain snow, darkened all the sweet flowers, here, my Lord. which be wet to the ground did not go, with true love showers. How do you, pretty lady? Well, God deal with you. They say the owl was a baker's daughter. And we know what we are, but we're not what we may be. God be at your table. Conceit upon her father. Pray, let's have no words of this. But when they ask me what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day, all in the morning bit time. And I have made at your window to be your Valentine. Then up he rose and donned his clothes and dug the chamber door. Let him love me, the tauter maid, never depart him more. Pretty Ophelia. Deep love without an oath, I'll make an end on it. Jason by Saint Charity, a lack and fight for she. Young men will do it if they can do it. By cock they are to blame. Quoth she, before you tumbled me, you promised me to wed. He answers, so would I have done by yonder sun. And thou hast not come to my bed! How long hath she been thus? I hope I will be well. Now, we must be patient. I cannot choose but weep. 
father's death and now behold oh Gertrude Gertrude when sorrows come they come not single spies but in battalions first her father slain next your son God and he most violent author of his own just removed the people muddy thick and unwholesome in their thoughts and whispers for good Polonius's death and we have done but greenly in hug a mother to inter him Poor Ophelia, divided from herself and her fair judgment, without the which we are pictures, or mere beasts. Last, and as much containing as all these, her brother is in secret come from France, feeds on his wonders, keeps himself in clouds, and wants not buzzers to infect his ears with pestilent speeches of his father's death. Rather, containing all in ear, and ear. Oh, my dear Gertrude, this like to a murdering piece in many places gives me superfluous death. Oh, thou vile king! <coughs> Give me my father! Calmly, good Laertes. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. Let him demand his fill. How can he dead? Will not be juggled with. <laughs> to hell, allegiance! Vows to the blackest devil! Grace and conscience to the profoundest pit. I dare damnation. <laughs> Let come what comes. Only I'll be revenged most truly for my father. Who shall stay you? My will, not all the world's. Good Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your dead father, it's written in your revenge that you shall draw against both friend and foe, winner and loser. None but his enemies. By now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman that I am guiltless of your father's death, and am most sensibly in grief for it. It shall as level to your judgment appear as day doth to your eye. Oh, Pete, try out my brains. Tears seven times sold burn out the sense and virtue of mine eye. Heavens, thy madness will be paid with weight until our scale turn the beam. Your maid, kind sister, sweet Ophelia. Possible the young maid's wit should be as mortal as an old man's life. Nature is fine in love, and where it is fine, it sends some precious instance of itself after the thing it loves. For him, bare faced on love, there you were. So thou wits and didst persuade revenge, it could not move thus. You must sing a downer, a downer, and you call him a downer. Oh, how the wheel becomes it. It is the false steward that stole his master's daughter. Yes, nothing's more than that. There's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray you love, remember. And there's pansies. <coughs> That's for thoughts. Documents and madness. <laughs> thoughts and remembrance fitted. There's fennel for you. And columbines. There's room for you. And here's some for me. We may call it a herb of grace on Sundays. But you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a 
daisy. I would give you some violets, but they were the door when my father died. They say he made a good end. Oh, body sweet Robin is all my Thoughts joy. And, afflictions. and will he Passion. not come again? Hell itself, she turns to favour and prettiness. And will he not come again? No. Never will come again. His feet was as white as snow. Oh, flaxen was his. Oh, he is gone. He's gone. See this. Oh, God! Laertes, I must commune with your grief, or you deny me rights. Go but apart. Make choice of whom your wisest friends you will, and they shall hear and judge twixt you and me. If by direct or by collateral hand they find us touched, we will our kingdom give, our crown, our life, and all that we call ours to you in satisfaction. But if not, be you content to lend your patience to us, and we will jointly labour with your soul to give it due content. Let this be so. His means of death, his obscure funeral, no trophy, sword, no hatchment o'er his bones, no noble right nor formal ostentation cry to be heard as twere from heaven to earth that I must call in question. So it shall. And where the offence is, let the great axe fall. I pray you, go with me. They treated me like thieves of mercy, but they knew what they did. I am to do a good turn for them. Let the king have the letters that I have sent thee, and prepare that to me with as much speed as I would fly death. I have words to speak in thine ear that would make thee dumb, yet they are too light for the bore of the night. Gilkenstern and Rosencrantz all their course to England. <coughs> of them I have much to tell thee. He that thou knowest thine. Now must your conscience my acquit and seal, and you must put me in your heart for friend, since you have heard, and with a knowing ear, he which hath your noble father slain pursued my life. It well appears. Tell me why you proceeded not against these feats so criminal and so capital in nature, as by your safety, wisdom, greatness, all things else you mainly were stirred up. Well, for two special reasons, which to you perhaps may seem much unsinew, but yet to me they're strong. The Queen, his mother, lives almost by his looks, and for myself, my virtue or my plague, be it either which, she is so conjunctive to my life and soul. And as the star moves not but in his fear, so I could not but by her. The other motive why to a public count I might not go is the great love the general gender bear him, who, dipping all his faults in their affections, work like the springe that turneth wood to stone, convert his guides to graces, <coughs> so that my arrows, too slightly timbered for so loud a wind, would have reverted to my bow again and not where I had aimed them. And so have I a noble father lost, 
The sister driven into desperate terms, whose worth, if praises may go back again, stood challenger on mount of all the age for her perfections. But my revenge will come. Break not your sleeps for that. You must not think that we are made of stuff so flat and dull that we can let our beard be shook with danger and think it pastime. You shortly shall hear more. I loved your father, and we love ourselves, and that, I hope, will teach you to imagine it. How oh, now? What news? Letters, my lord, from Hamlet. These to your majesty. This to the queen. From Hamlet? Who brought them? Sailors, my lord, they say. I saw them not. Laertes, you shall hear them. Leave us. I am knighted. You shall know that I am sit naked on your kingdom. <coughs> Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall, first asking your pardon thereunto, recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet, what should this mean? Are all the rest come back? Or is this some abuse and no such thing? No, you the hand. It is Hamlet's character, naked, and in a postscript he says, alone. Can you devise me? I am lost in it, my lord. But let him come. <laughs> Warms the very sickness in my heart that I shall live and tell him to his teeth. Thus didst thou. If it be so, Laertes. As how should it be so? How otherwise? Will you be ruled by me? Aye, my lord. So you will not all rule me to a peace. To thine own peace. If he be now returned, as checking at his voyage, and that he means no more to undertake it. I will work him to an exploit, now right in my device, under the which he cannot choose but fall. And for his death, no wind of blame shall breathe, but even his mother shall uncharge the practice and call it accident. My lord, I will be ruled, the rather if you could devise it so that I might be the organ. It falls right. Laertes, was your father dear to you? Or are you but the painting of a sorrow? A face without a heart? Why ask you this? Not that I think you did not love your father, but that I know love is begun by time. Time qualifies the spark and fire of it. There lives within the very flame of love a kind of wick or snuff that will abate it. And nothing is at a like goodness still. For goodness, growing to a pleurisy, dies in his own too much. What we would do, we should do when we would. But this wood changes. And hath abatements and delays, as many as there are tongues, our hands are accidents. And then this should is like a spendthrift side that hurts by easy. But to the quick of the ulcer, Hamlet is returned. What would you undertake to show yourself indeed your father's son more than in words? To cut his throat in the church! No place indeed should murder sanctuary. Revenge should have no bounds. But good Laertes, will you do this? Keep close within your chamber. Hamlet returns, shall know you are come home. We'll put on those shall praise your excellence at swordsmanship. Bring you in fine together and wager on your heads. He being remiss, most generous and free from all contriving, will not peruse the swords so that with ease or with a little shuffling you may choose a sword unbated and in the pass of practice Requite him for your father. I will do it. And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountebank. So mortal that... But dip a knife in it where it draws blood. No cataplasm so rare. Collected from all simples that have virtue under the moon. And save the thing from death that is but scratched with all. I'll touch my point with this contagion. That if I but score him slightly, it may be death. Let's further think on this. Weigh what convenience both of time and means may fit us to our project. If this should fail, and that I've just looked through our bad performance to a better not to say, therefore this project should have a back or second that will hold if this did blast improve. A soft, let me see. We make a solemn wager on your cunnings. I have it. 
When in your motions you are hot and dry, as make your bouts more violent to that end, and that he calls for drink, I'll have preferred him a chalice for the nonce, whereon but sipping. If he by chance escape your venom stuck, our purpose shall hold there. Oh, Hannah, what noise? How, sweet queen? One woe doth tread upon another's heels, so fast they follow. <coughs> your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Oh, where? There is a willow, grows a scarp the brook, that shows his hoar leaves in the glassy stream. There, with fantastic garlands, did she make of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples. But liberal shepherds do give a grosser name, but our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There on the pendant bough, clambering to hang, an envious sliver broke. And down her weedy trophies and herself fell into the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide, and mermaid like a while they bore her up at which time she sang snatches of old tunes as one incapable of her own distress, or as a creature native and endued unto that element. Long it could not be, till that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy feet. Then she is drowned. 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 <coughs> Too much of water has that poor Ophelia. And therefore I forbid my tears. And yet it is our trick. Nature, her custom holds, let shame say what it will. When these are gone, the woman will be out. Adieu, my lord. I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but that this folly drowns it. Let's follow, Gertrude. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. Love me, thought it was bad to me to contract the time. I'm hardly home, me thought there was nothing me. Has this fellow no feeling of his business? Sings in grave making. Custom hath made it in him a property of easy. Is he in so? The hand of little employment hath the daintier sense. Yeah, and then try on with stealing step to claw me in his clutch, who shook me in into the land as if I had never been searched. I think kicks in the spade, a spade for in the shrouding sheet. A pit to play for to be made for such a guest is me. Whose grace is sir? Mine, sir. A pit to play for to be made for such a guest is me. I think it be thine indeed, but thou liest in't. You lie out, Tom, so therefore tis not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, yet it is mine. But thou liest in to be in't and say tis thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore, thou liest. Twas a quick lie, twill away again from me to you. What man dost thou pray did it for? No man, sir. What woman then? None neither. One who is to be buried in. Ah, one that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. How <laughs> absolute the knave is. How long hast thou been grave maker? Of all the days of the year, I came to it that day our last King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. How long is that, six? 
Can you not tell? <coughs> Any fool can tell that. Just the day young Hamlet was born. He, he's mad and sent to England. I marry. Why was he sent to England? I will recover his wits there. Or if it does not, he's no great matter there. Why? We'll not be seen in him there. There, all the men are as mad as he is. <laughs> <coughs> how came you, man? Very strangely, they say. Well, how strangely? Fighting with loons in his wits. On what ground? Here, in Denmark. <laughs> How long will a man like the earth here he rot? Oh, if I be not dead before he die, as we have many of fucking courses nowadays, we'll not take the line in. That will last you some uh, eight or nine years. A uh, tanner will last you nine years. Why he more than another? Oh, why, sir? For his hide is so tanned with his trade that it will hold out water. And water is your sole decayer of your horse and dead body. Now, here's a skull, sir. Uh, here's a skull, sir, that have lain in the ground some three and twenty years. Well, whose was it? Oh, a horse and mad fella. Who do you think it was? <laughs> I know not. Pestilence on him for a mad rogue. I pulled a flag and a rennish on me, Edwards. This same skull, sir, was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. <laughs> What's this? Say that. Well, let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. Fellow of infinite jest and most excellent fancy. He had borne me on his back a thousand times. And now, abhorred in my imagination it is, my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips which I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambles? Your flashes of merriment that will want to set the table on a roar? What? Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chop fallen. Now get you to my lady's table and tell her. Let her paint an inch thick. To this favour she must come. Make her laugh at that. <laughs> Here come a king and queen. Who is this they follow with such main ranks? This not for token that the course they follow did with desperate hands or do its own life. It was of some estate. Couch me a while and mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth. Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranty. Her death was doubtful. And but that great command o'er says the order, she should in ground unsanctified be lodged till the last trumpet. For charitable prayers, shards, flints and pebbles should be thrown on her. But here she is allowed her virgin crants, her maiden strumments, and the bringing home of bell and burial. Must there no more be done? No more be done. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violets spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia. Sweets to the sweet, farewell. I hope thou should have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked sweet maid, and not have strewn thy grave. Treble woe fall ten times double on that cursed head. Whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while, till I have caught her once more in mine arms. Now pile your dust upon the quick and dead. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? Whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder wounded hearers? The devil take thy soul! Thou prayest not well! I pray thee. Take thy fingers from my throat. For though I am not splendid even rash, yet have I in me something dangerous which let thy wisdom fear. Hold off your hand! Pluck them asunder! Hamlet! Hamlet! Gentlemen! Oh, sir, my love, be quiet! I will fight with him upon this theme till my eyelids no longer wag! Oh, my son, what theme? I love Ophelia! Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my son. What would thou 
I'll do for her. Oh, he is mad, Laertes. For God's sake, forbear him. Sons. Tell me what thou'll do. <laughs> what we would fight, would fast, would tear thyself. I'll do it. Dost thou come here to whine? To face me with leaping in her grave. Be very quick with her, and so will I. This is mere madness. Hear me, sir. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever. But it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and the dog will have his day. I pray thee, good Horatio, wait upon him. <coughs> Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shortly shall we see. Till then, in patience, our proceeding be. You do remember all the circumstance? Remember it, my lord. Sir, in my heart there was a kind of fighting that would not let me sleep. Rashly, and praise be rashness for it. Up from my cabin I found Horatio. Ah, Royal Knavery. An exact command, larded with many several sorts of reasons, importing Denmark's health and England's too. That on the supervise, no leisure baited, no not to stay the grinding of the axe. My head should be struck off. Is it possible? Here's the commission. <coughs> Read it at more leisure. Will not hear now how I do proceed. I beseech you. Being thus benetted round with villainies, I sat me down, devised a new commission, wrote it fair. Would that hear the effect of what I wrote? I give my lord. An earnest conjuration from the king, as England was his faithful tributary, that on the view and knowing of these contents, he should those bearers put to sudden death, no shining time allowed. How is this still? Why, even in that heaven was ordinant. I had my father's signet in my purse, that was the model of that Danish seal. Folded up the writ in the form of the other, subscribed it, gave it the impression the changeling never known. Now, the next day was my sea fight, and after this, what was secret thou knowest already? So Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, go to it. My man, they do my glove to this employment. They are not near my conscience. Their defeat does by their own insinuation grow. It's very dangerous when the baser nature comes between the past and fell incensed points of mighty opposites. What? What a king is this? Does it not think these stand me now upon? He that hath killed my king and hoard my mother, put him between the election and my hopes, thrown out his anger at my proper life, and with such cousinage. Is it not perfect conscience to quit him with this arm? Shall shortly have been unto him from England, what is the issue of the business there? It will be sure. The interim <coughs> is mine, and a man's life's no more than to save one. But I am very sorry, good Horatio, that to Laertes I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. I will court his favours. But sure, the bravery of his guilt did put me into a towering passion. Peter comes here. Your lordship, 
is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Does note this water No, good, my lord. My state is the more gracious, but is advice to know him. Sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. <laughs> I will receive it, sir, with all diligence of spirit. A put your body to his right use, tis for the head. Well, I thank your lordship, it is very hot. Oh, no, no. It is very cold. The wind is northerly. It is indifferent, oh, my lord, indeed. Yet methinks it is very sultry and hot for my complexion. Exceeding, my lord. It is very sultry as to a... I cannot tell how. <coughs> but, my lord, his majesty bade me signify to you that he has laid a great wager on your head. Sir, this is the matter. Ah, sir, I do beseech you to remember. Nay, good my lord, for my ease in good faith. Sir, here is newly come to court Laertes. Believe me, an absolute gentleman, full of most excellent differences, of very soft society and great showing. Indeed, to speak feelingly of him, he is the card or calendar of gentry, for you shall find in him the continent of what part a gentleman would see. What imports the nomination of this gentleman? Of Laertes. His purse is empty already. All golden words are spent. Of him, sir. I know you are not ignorant of... I would you did, sir. But if you did, it would not much approve me. Oh, well, sir. You are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. I dare not confess that. Lest I compare with him in excellence. But to know a man well were to know himself. I mean, sir, for his weapon. Oh. But in the imputation laid on him by them in his knee, his unfellow. What's his weapon? Sword and dagger. That's two of his weapons. But well. The king, sir, hath laid, sir, that in a dozen passes between you, he shall not exceed you three hits. He hath laid on twelve for nine, and it would come to immediate trouble if your lordship would vouchsafe an answer. How if I answer no? I mean, sir, for the opposition of your person in trial. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it please his majesty, it is the breathing time of day with me. Let the swords be brought. The gentleman willing and the king hold his purpose. I shall win for him and I can. If not, well, then I gain nothing but my shame and the odd pits. Shall I re-deliver you in, sir? Oh, to this effect, sir. After what flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours? Yours? <laughs> he does well to commend it himself. There no comes else for his turn. He's not being away with a shell on his head. My lord, his majesty commended him to you by <coughs> young Osric, who brings back to him that you attend him in the hall. He sent to know if your pleasure hold to play with Laertes, or that you will take longer time. I am constant to my purposes. They follow the king's pleasure. The king and queen are coming down. Oh, in happy time. The queen desires you to use some gentle entertainment to Laertes before you fall to play. She will instruct me. You will lose this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Since he has been in France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. I would not think how ill it was here about my heart. But it is no matter. Nay, but good my Nay, lord. but it is foolery. Yet it is such a kind of games giving as would perhaps trouble a woman. If your mind is right, anything will pay it. I will forestall the prepared then and say you are not fit. Not a whit. I defy augury. There is special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now yet, it will come. The readiness is all. Well, since no man knows of aught he leaves, what is to leave the times? Let it be. Come, Hamlet, come. Take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. 
I have done you wrong. But pardon it as you are a gentleman. This presence knows, and you must needs have heard, how am I punished with a sore distraction. What I have done, I here proclaim was madness. Let my disclaiming from this purpose, evil, free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature, but in my terms of honour I stand aloof and will no reconcilement till by some elder known means of honour I have a voice and precedent of peace to keep my name on God. But until that time, I do receive your offered love like love, and will not wrong it. I embrace it freely. And will this, brothers, wager frankly play? Give us the swords, go on! Come on for me. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager? Yes, my good lord. Your honour hath laid the odds over the weaker side. <laughs> I do not think it, I have seen you both. Set me the stoops of wine upon that table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, or quit in answer of the third exchange, let all the battlements their ordnance fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup an union shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cup, and let the kettle to the trumpet speak, the trumpet to the cannoneer without, the cannons to the heavens, the heaven to earth. Now the king drinks to Hamlet. Come, begin. I am you the judges. Bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. Is to thy help, give him the cup. I play this back first, set it by a while. Come. shall win. A scant of breath. The queen carouses o'er thy fortune, Hamlet. Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. I dare not, madam, sit by a while. Come, let me wipe your face. My lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. And yet it is almost against my conscience. Come to the third, Laertes, you do but done. I pray you pass with your best violence. I am afraid you make a wanton of me. Say so. Come on. Oh, why is a woodcock to mine own spring, Josric? 
I am justly killed with my own treachery. What does the queen? She swoons to see them bleed. Drink, drink, my dear Hamlet. The drink, the drink. <laughs> in the world can do thee good. In thee there is not half an hour's life. The treacherous instrument lies in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. Foul practice hath turned itself upon me. I can no more. The king. The king's to blame. The point envenomed. Then spread it to thy word! Oh! Oh! Oh, yet defend me, friends! I am but hurt! Oh! Oh! Here! Mm. Thou incestuous oh. murderous! Oh. Damn thee, day! Mm. Drink of this potion! Mm. Is the union here? Mm. Follow my mother! He is justly so. It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not on thee, nor thine on me. Never make thee free of it. I follow thee. Wretched Queen of Dew. Through at the pale and tremble at this chance. Who are but mute or audience to this act had I but time. But let it be. Horatia! Thy death! Thou livest. Report me in my cause of right to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I'm more anti vermin than day. Somebody can lift. That's not a man to go the cop! <laughs> oh, God, Horatio, what a wounded name! Friends, standing thus from none shall I leave behind me. Have a home in thy heart absent thee from felicity a while. And in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. Oh, I, I die, Horatio. The bones of poison quite overcrows my spirit. In silence. Now, perhaps a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. The clients of Major sing thee to thy rest. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. 
and flights of air.